One of the challenges that India is going to face, uh, and it's a challenge that actually uh, most countries across the globe are facing, is what do you do, how do you create more jobs, especially with the advent of technology, with artificial intelligence, robotics, and so on and so forth. Divakar, let me put that question to you. You know, people are scared about the fact that here are robots, they're going to take away your job, automation is actually going to disrupt industries as we know them today, and instead of creating jobs, you're actually going to be in a situation where you won't need humans for those jobs. How do we create an ecosystem where AI can be purposeful? So the first thing which I would like to tell you is that AI is a now an old term. Now what we are working on is... Sorry, I'm, I'm old. What can I say? <laughs> what, what is the new term? <laughs> so uh, what we are working on is uh, real intelligence. Okay. So what we do is uh, there's a headset which I put on the head of anyone and uh, my system can get to know what you're thinking inside your head and it can work... Uh, oh and dear God, this sounds <laughs> awful. <laughs> And by this, what we made last year was uh, a mind-controlled wheelchair for paralyzed people. Okay. So that is a wheelchair that are basically uh, controlled by just thought. So that person just needs to think and the wheelchair will move in that direction. But so now is this prototype out? Uh, yeah, you can actually go ahead and purchase it. And okay. it is uh, the world's first mind-controlled wheelchair completely made in India as well. Wow, yeah. big round of applause. Thank you. So right now what we are doing is uh, we are because now we can sense how uh, the human brain is working. Making a physical robot is not very challenging but what is more challenging is making it uh, feel, it, making it uh, do the work and think like humans. So what we did was we understood the brain of the human by that technology and now what our robot is doing is it is basically understanding what is going on inside your head under different type of situation mm. and now copying it inside the robot itself and it's just not copying the way your brain is working but also your emotions your emotional stability and your is emotional response as well so it won't just work like you but it will also express your emotions just like you so now uh, by this system we can do grid computing and we can get a system which is in any case way better faster and uh, it is in every single measurable way better than any other human on this planet hmm. in taking decisions uh, which is good for the society as a whole. Yeah. So that's why uh, when the hybrid week is concerned, uh, one of the things which I would like to mention is there are only three or four elections uh, that we need to encounter for uh, choosing our uh, Prime Minister hmm. of this country. Hmm. Uh, beyond that, we might be choosing a robot or a type of robot for the country because uh, our, our human body uh, is very, very uh, good. Uh, we are inferior to a chimpanzee in physical capabilities, mm. but the fate of the chimpanzee decides uh, on what we do right now. Correct. That is because of our intellectual ability. Mm. And uh, it is, uh, it is uh, very important that we can uh, do this because we can plan for the future. Mm. But the problem is we can only plan, we are biologically planned that way, that we can only think about future for one, two, three, four, five years, nothing beyond that. That's mm. why uh, people smoke, but despite knowing that, uh, you know, th yeah. on the packets, we, yeah. we know it's bad yeah. for us, but who cares? Whatever happens 10, 20 years later, we don't Bhagwan care about it. That's right. <laughs> so, these robots can be designed in any different way to take Can they play? Can they bowl better than Anil Kumble? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Can I, can I get a few headsets? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, definitely, sir, but uh, still, uh, what you can understand by it is pretty much limited and we don't uh, intrude inside the brain. But uh, getting back to the point is that uh, these robots, uh, we are supplying, we are actually developing these robots for many institutions here in India. These are medical institutions, some of the government institutions, and also government bodies uh, so or for uh, some of the developed countries as well, where what these robots are doing is efficiently managing human resources. Okay. So now, rather than an experienced person, now the system, would be placing the humans in at such situation that the overall cost or the use of humans would mm. be reduced. Now, this is one of the first uh, intent of the robot is to manage human population in a much better way so that we get more productive. Mm. People say at this point of time the, the repetitive job would be replaced by a robot but uh, in truth, if you, become, if you become optimistic, I think uh, robots would be better at inventing things as mm. well. But... Uh, think about right now your smartphone has enabled you to book Ola cabs this cab that cab what yeah, not yeah. right and that has disrupted and taken away jobs of a lot of auto rickshaws mm. the conventional taxis but then their life is not over mm. right they, they get better this mm. is evolution this yeah. is how it will happen and with robots the same thing will happen so don't worry about so you need to worry about developing skills for the future That's so the way correct. that we look and identify at 
skills development for the future requires Correct. a mind sh- mindset change exactly. uh, and also this is the new concept of the new collar job so we've gone from exactly. blue and white collar to now these new collar jobs where the power of technology is essentially being leveraged that's very correct and also because young students are here i would uh, very specifically point out i i'm a guest lecturer to various iits and what i tell them and mr trump has made my job much more easier that uh, you know uh, people you're probably stu- the only one he's made your <laughs> job easier <laughs> so people people they study here in india good minds they go to f- foreign countries they they solve their problems the point is we have a huge population and as an entrepreneur you know this is the best thing about my country because i can sell different things to different people and yeah. i can make technologies and uh, when you are in india you can understand the problem of india way more better and mm. there are a lot of problems so the opportunity lies here uh, and uh, i think uh, if you if you focus on india's uh, problems um, and uh, take the hybrid mindset into consideration there's so much that we can do oh together. very well said and and let's uh, uh, get uh, one of our young students here Srinitya, a student in class 8 to tell us what did you think of what Divakar just said and how do you see uh, the opportunities and challenges that India currently faces how would you like to address them Well I think that this is a very good idea but I personally feel my opinion is going to change later on for sure it's going to change because I'm still very young now but I feel that even though technology is developing at a very rapid rate we're focusing on the incorrect well not incorrect but a different type of development which is a very very different to the type i'm thinking of What like thinking of? <laughs> i'm thinking of like poverty gender inequality and those kinds of things should be uh, tackled first and then technology a uh, uh, second so uh, i think we should take the um, Uh, morals and all those kinds of things as a priority and then focus on technology i completely agree with you i think yes we need to focus on values as much as we need to focus on economic prosperity and the two have to go hand in hand uh, yes i'm kishor singhal from doon public school my question is to mr divakar sir have you ever thought that how can these robots help us uh, fight against pollution in around the globe so that one day we'll have a pollution free life one of the key challenges because of which uh, the pollution and all these things are a big problem is because of inefficiency right uh, we go on the road there's ample road for almost all of us but we still uh, end up clogging those roads because of uh, violating traffic rules mm. because of inefficient driving skills mm. changing lanes this and that right uh, let's put a robot inside that car you don't need a red light all together they are good enough to drive in a very smooth way take you from point a to point b in the most safest way possible this is just one example think about uh, going because when i go to the airport uh, from my from my home in the morning i take like 15 20 minutes whereas if i go on a on a afternoon uh, monday mo- afternoon or monday morning it takes me more than one and a half hour right where does that fuel go that goes into the environment in form of co2 and uh, those pollu- uh, so those divakar gases. how do you program humans to be more like robots <laughs> <laughs> that's the more and difficult and follow traffic part. rules <laughs> <laughs> that's the more difficult part but still yes there are some systems uh, and you might have uh, got some of uh, the uh, traffic violation uh, uh, challenges at your home uh, which is a robot generated so they automatically sense that okay you have uh, done some over speeding or something okay. so these can be implemented when as soon as you cross a red light you don't need to worry about a policeman standing there you are sure that you'll get a challan at your home and that would be very expensive Thank you.